Hey, what's up, guys? Chung here again. So today, let's continue our lead code DP problem journey here. So let's take a look at uh, number 375. Guess number higher or lower number two. This one got a lot of downvotes because the problem description is not 100% clear. And let's take a look. So we are playing the guess game. The game is as followed. So I pick a number from 1 to n. And you have to guess which number I picked. Basically, so the, the, tr the tricky part of this problem is that so every time when you when your guess is wrong, you pay this same amount, you the number you guessed. And you win the game when you guess the number. Basically, there's a like secret number the other person's picked, right? And it asks you how much money you need to have to guarantee a win, right? So basically, ask asks you to, uh, it doesn't uh, this, uh, ask you very clearly here. Basically, ask you the minimum, the minimum money you can guarantee to win, right? Otherwise, I mean, if you're a millionaire, you don't really care. You basically, you don't need to find any any strategy. You can just guess the number one by one until you, right. You can just guess the number from n one to n, right. And then at at the end, you will sooner or later you you guess the number. So, but this, but this problem it asks you to uh, to find the the minimum money, right? The minimum money that can guarantee you a win, right? And another part is that. So we don't know the uh, we don't know the the numbers that's I mean the correct answer right so when we guess a number we get either lower or smaller or or lower right so and let's say for example here right we have one two three four five right so we have this f uh, five numbers here let's say if the first if at the beginning we guess three here. Right. If we guess three, we have a. So it could be either tells you it's a it's smaller or the, it tells you if it's on the left side or the right side. Right. Basically, it basically can tell you if the number is higher than three or smaller than three. Right. And in this case, so another thing we need to make sure here is that so we are, we should always assume it give us the worst answer comparing to left or, or the right, right? Because that's the, because we have to assume the worst case scenario, and then we can, then we can safely say, okay, it's, we, with this money is guaranteeing a win, right? So it, it, we cannot assume like uh, uh, too optimistically, right? So we have to assume the, uh, we have to be more uh, pessimistic in this case. So basically, when we get three, three in this in this case, right? So it could be either left or right, right? And we have to be, basically we'll be taking the ones that can give us may give us the higher cost, right? So in this case, it will be the the right side because if if it's tell us on the left side, right? So all we need to do is we, we see okay if, if we only have one two numbers here, right? So all we need to do is we just do a three plus one, right? And then the two will be the answer, right? But in this case, it has to be on it. So we're assuming this, uh, this, this number is on, on the, uh, on the worst case scenario side. In this case, that will be on the, on the four and five, right? So, and if we, if we know, cause it's under four and five, then what's the minimum money that can guarantee us a win, right? So it's basically it's going to be four in this case, right? Because if we, as all we need to do is we just need to make one, one more guess, right? And the worst case scenario is it's always the, uh, we didn't guess that correctly, right? But that's all we need. That's all the left we need to guess. And for that one, we just need to guess a smaller number that can guarantee us 
if it's not four, if, if it's five, that's the cost. That's the cost we will we'll make, right? To uh, to get to the correct number here, right? And is this the optimal optimal way to guess the number, right? So this this problem it seems like always guessing the middle point will be always the best solution for us, right? So even even me, I was thinking about okay. So every time when I have a range, I I, I just simply cut. I always guess the middle point, right? But I think for this problem, it's that's not not the case. Basically, we have to guess all the possible places. Why? Let's take a look. Let's try another uh, example here. So let's say we try we guess two first, right? If we guess two here, so so uh, assume. To, to assume the worst case scenario, it will tell us, okay, the number will be on, on the right side. So it's, it's going to be between three, four, and five, right? So between three, four, and five, what's our best optimal play here, right? So what's the best way to, to guess the number here? Four, right? So for us, basically for us, for the person who guessed the number, we will always be taking the optimal solutions here, right? But we are always assuming we'll get the best, uh, the worst case scenario. So in this case, all we need to do is we just get, try to guess four, right? Because when we guess four, right, it's either the we we find four, or it or it tells us if it's a smaller or or greater or bigger one, right? So if it's a smaller one, then three is our answer. If it's a bigger one, then five is the answer. So all we need is the two plus four, which is equal to six. As you can see here, by guessing the the middle one, it's not always the optimal, the best solution for us. So basically, we have to guess all the all the pivot points, right, within with this range. Okay. And so and for the DP problem, for DP like from DP uh, start and end, right? So we have a start and end. So what's the start and end here? Basically, the and so the state transition transition function for DP uh, start from end is the uh, basically we need to try all the uh, the pivot point, right? The pivot point basically we split this uh, start to end this uh, array into two parts, and among those two parts we always get the the worst one, which is the the, the bigger one, right? So that's why we're gonna have like the uh, and in the end, hmm, you know what? Um, let me draw this here. DP start and end, right? So for for the pivot K point, for, for the K, we have a maximum of the uh, DP start to K minus one, right? And then and then DP uh, K pl plus one, right? K plus one dot N, right? And and then plus plus K, right? Basically, we will be picking the uh, the K point as a pivot point, and once we pick that one, we're assuming okay, we'll be guessing that that number. So basically, this K will be the current cost for us, and so once we split the this uh, start to end into two sub arrays, and dp dp s to k minus one, dp k minus plus one to e will represent the following cost, right? And since we're always assuming uh, the worst case scenario, that's why we'll be getting the max, maximum uh, out of those things, right? And then in the end, 
for the DPSE, right, for all those all those kind of K possibilities, we'll be getting a minimum of this, right? K is the uh, S, right? Basically, that's our state transition function here. So we have a, actually, it's kind of intuitive, right? So if you start from the, uh, you know, for okay, one, uh, one, one more thing. So for this problem, we can either do a top down, which is the recursion with memorization or bottom up. I think for me, I uh, I find this problem like to use a uh, use a recursion plus memorization would be more intuitive because that's aligned with the uh, our guessing our guessing process, right? Basically, we start we start with the start and e, which means it's from n one to n, right? And then we are we are keep guessing a numbers, right? And then it give us a result. We just keep keep splitting the 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 result, right? So I I feel like uh, the top down is more intuitive for me uh, for this problem. So that's why I'm de I decided to use top down to try uh, to solve this problem. Okay. So mm, yeah, like I said, so every time when we we have a range here, right? So it, we uh we try to split. Okay. We, we split the, the way we, we split it we are basically we pick basically we, we pick the numbers right from s to to e right the k is from s to e and we pick this number as our guessing point and then uh from this one point on so basically this is going to be our k right three is going to be our k and the left part is one and two the right part is the three uh the four and five Right, uh, among those two parts, we always get the, the worst case, and then uh, and then we plus the k, right, to be our current minimum cost, right. Since we are going to do a for loop here, right, and basically we try all the pivot points among all those those possible ways, we get the minimum because we're trying to get the minimum money that can guarantee us a win. Okay, cool. So I think that's pretty much. The, the thinking process for this problem problem and let's try to code these things up okay and like I said uh, I'm gonna use a D DP right so start and end right and for DPs for uh, recursions with the memorizations we always do a uh, memorizations here right and then thing here we simply return the DP one two one two n right that that's what that's where our starting point we pick a number from we guess from one to n right okay here uh let's say if uh mm, if sw right the template in memorizations right we simply return it's memorization dot s dot E, right so that's the first one and then and okay then we can have an answer here answer for the current uh, DP problem right since we're getting the minimum value right so we always initialize it to get the maximum size okay and then in the end uh, we just uh, the same template here right answer here and then we return the answer right so that's our template and now the problem comes down how can we uh how can we uh mm, do the answer right the answer. so like i said the all what we need to do is we're gonna pick the, the pivot point right so basically we pick the pivot point that we're gonna be a for for right in range range s and e e, e plus one right basically we're picking all the possible pivot points here right and then and then we have a mm, we have a next step. I'm gonna create a next step equals to DP the maximum sorry maximum DP uh, s dot k minus one right k minus one and then DP k plus one dot 
dot uh, dot end, right? And then the our answer will be the minimum, right? As the answer dot what what's the x plus next step, right? So as you can see here, so we are like uh, selecting from s to uh, to k minus one the, and the k plus one to e, right? So so this k minus one could be smaller than the s, and the k plus one could be greater than than the e here, right? So in that case, uh, basically we are like overlapping the uh, the boundaries, right? Which should which should be shouldn't be a, a valid case, right? So I think we can just um, for the boundary check, basically if the s is greater than the e, right? So we simply return zero right basically we're, we're telling him okay we're not getting anything here right so if it's the same basically e even if it's the same one we're guessing the same okay so when s equals to e what does it mean it means that the start and end point are, are the same right so that's uh, something like uh, if we only have one number here so the cost for this one number is zero Right, because we have only one answer to guess, and that's that will be answered by guessing the last correct answer here. We don't pay anything, right? Same thing for, right? So that's basically the uh, when the s is great equals to e means right return to zero, and when it's greater, when s is even greater than 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 the than the e, it, then it doesn't really make sense, right? Basically, it it's not a valid start and end. We also return zero, so it won't affect our maximum result here. Okay. Mm, cool. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it is, right? So, and then let's try to run it here. Mm, okay. K is not. Oh, sorry. So it's going to be X here. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should use a K here. Yeah. Just to align with what we uh, discussed there. Yeah, it passed. You know, of course, there's another way, uh, like a bottom-up solutions for this problem. You know, maybe you guys have already uh, realized that. You know, the the difference between the top-down and the bottom-up is the uh, for the top-down, which is the re the recursion plus the memorizations, we most of we don't have to uh, worry about the the over the the overflow of the boundaries, right? Because all we need is we, we're just using the, the recursion functions to track the boundaries. And all we need to make sure is the, uh, uh, when we reach the, when we when we, we are outside of the boundaries, we just need to return some base, base, uh, base values here, right? But if we are doing like bottom up, which, uh, which means we're gonna have a DP here, we're gonna have a 2D DPI, and dpj here right and for this dp for this bottom up solutions here you know we have to uh first we have to be make we have to make sure this i and j is not this is not uh outside of the boundaries here right and second we have to be uh sometimes we need to initialize the uh the uh, uh the, the 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 base case in this case right in this case is the s equals to 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 end, which means all the dp uh, one one right dp two two right they all should be equal to zero right three three equals to zero and right until n and n right it also equals to zero. So that's something we have to be. Be, be taken care of, right? We have to do when we do the bottom up because we have to uh, make sure all the DPs, all the DP arrays we have been using, we're 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 trying to use is already pre-calculated. But that that's not a problem for this uh, recursion because anyway we're gonna have a base case for all the recursion function method. We just need to be careful uh, to make sure what's the baseline here right and then we will be we don't need to worry about if this s and an n will be inside of the boundaries or not as long as we take care taking care 
take care of those things beforehand, right? Mm. But I think the advantage of the this bottom up, other than the the recursion, is you know the uh, I think as long as we can use the bottom up, I think it's always better than the than the recursion. Even though the recursion is more intuitive, right? Be, why is because first you know we don't for some in some machines and uh, languages there are like this kind of re recursion limitations you can only make a certain nested recursion re I mean recursive cause if you reach that limit basically your solution will be uh, will stop right or will error out but with this kind of like arrays here dp dp functions right dp arrays here there's no limitations on that no limitations on that so so I think the the best the best solution for for us will be uh, try to uh, solve this problem with a, re, a recursive and with memorizations approach first, and then trying to see if we can uh, you can convert this one into a bottom up. Yeah, because I think in my opinion, the bottom up solution should be our final target. Yeah, and. Yeah, let me see the bottom up. Okay, and okay, I will try to uh, do the bottom up here for you guys to see. Uh, let's see how, if I can do it here or not. So I'm gonna come out this top down, and I'll try to do the bottom up, right? So with bottom up, of course, we need to define, like I said, we need to de define DP here, okay? Uh, okay, so we define the DP here with the uh, gonna be 2D arrays here, right? So we initialize with zero. Hmm. Yeah, okay, we, we can initialize with zero here. Okay, let's do a zero here, M plus one, right? Since we'll be doing some like K minus one, K plus one, uh, I will try to uh, I think to be safer, so we need to do a M, M plus two. I think. But let's see if this will work for range M plus two. Okay, so that's our initialization, and then so the first the first loop is the. Um, uh, I think we're gonna have a length here, right? Because or you know what? Let's do a. Basically, the starting point, right? So we're gonna have a starting point, which is the i, right? Since the dp i i j will be stand will stand will stand for the uh, standing for the start and the end, right? Of this like with this start and end, what's the minimum values, right? The minimum the minimum money to guarantee a win to guess from the number i to j, right? So the i will be in range, okay? In range one, right? One to one to n, uh, n plus one. Okay. Starts. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know. <clears throat> so, you know, for this problem, as you can see, so I just I just start, right? And then what's the end? The end is gonna be uh. The end is gonna be the at least we need to to guess to increase start and end will be the mm. okay so for example see if we are doing the bottom up so there will be like a consider more like edge cases so with the uh, <laughs> with the, this dynamic obviously the re recursion recursive functions we can just simply do whatever. We can just, uh, use a sim simpler mindset. All we need to do is just check this one. But with bottom up, we have to be sure that our our thing will not be over the the range of the boundaries of the DP here. Okay, so and uh, since we're going to have the the starting point, right? So the starting point, then we have to be uh, to see uh, what's the length of the starting point, right? So 
Okay, I think we, we need to have outer a length here in range and two to the n plus n plus one, right? Why is that? Because you know I think for the length of two here, for length of one, uh, we don't we don't need to care, right? So one means from the starting point i, uh, i means itself. Uh, one means itself. Like I said. Previously, if it's just one number, there's the cost is zero, right? So we don't have to process that. So we only need to start with length two, right? And with this length here, and what's going to be our ending point, right? So the ending point is going to be the n minus length. Hmm. Yeah, n minus length. Okay, do I need to do a plus one here? Let's see. So let's say if we have a if we have a number one to let's see one to seven, right, and then. A length, let's see if our length is three. Three here. So what's the what's the biggest what's the biggest start we can have, right? So we can have like start our biggest start will be uh five six seven. So our biggest I so so I the last I should be five in this case, right? Because the length three, five, six, seven. Okay, that's our biggest start. And um, then what's the, so it's going to be seven, seven minus three equals to four, but we need the five, four plus one, a uh, four pl plus two, because in Python, this is like, uh, like uh, inclusive. So, okay. I see. So. Basically, here we need to do a plus two, right, to give us the the latest the latest uh, starting point, right? And then now we have a we have starting point, and then we have an ending point, right? So what's the what's the what's the ending point? So the J will be a uh, will be the the I plus length. Uh, minus one, right? So that's our ending point. Okay, so hmm. so same thing, dp. So at the beginning, we're gonna initialize the dp as dpij, uh, with the uh, with the system dot maximum, right? And then for the for the x, right? For the k points. In the range of 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 i and and j, right? J j plus one or j i to j. Yeah, I think. Because I think here we can just uh, either do a J plus one or J. It doesn't really matter, I believe, because uh, the J uh, to pivot at the last one. Mm. Let's do a J plus one here, okay? And then uh, Basically, the uh, uh, like I said, the, the next step, right? Next step is the, uh, the maximum of the DP uh, I K, mi K minus one, okay, right? Then the DP K plus one dot 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 J, right? Yeah. OK, 
k sorry k plus one dot j and then the dp i j will be the minimum of the dp i j of the uh, of k plus next step right so okay in the end we just return the dp one one to n right same thing here same thing as the uh, the the, re the recursive method here and uh, let's try to run it okay yeah index out of the boundaries here and oh maybe here maybe i okay maybe this one i forgot to do this yeah Cool, it passed because you see the, the reason we're doing this like the m plus two here is because we are we are utilize we are making these things uh, we are making this case to be able to reach the last element here right so which could be over the boundaries here and because we do a, m, a k plus one here I mean if we do a m plus one here that's the the other side we should maybe if we do a j plus one a, instead of a j instead of j plus one I think here will be okay if I let's try to run it. Yeah, see. So, so basically, as you as you guys can see here, it depends on how we are choosing the case here and how we are doing this k plus one or k minus one here. We have to be we have to be careful, like how many of the how what's the length of our two two D uh, problems here, two D dimensionals here, two D arrays here, two D list whatever and then the same thing here basically same idea as this one but uh the the difference here is because with the uh for this problem i think the the dp the recursive call is more it's easier because we, we already have the start and end all we need is to find the pivot point but in this case uh coming from the from the scratch where basically we're right, coming from the bottom we have nothing right so we have nothing basically we have to somehow construct the start and end with the length first right then and then we gradually build these things up and then in the end and while we're building these things up we also try to find the, the pivot point right for each of the range here uh, yeah, cool. I think that's and oh, by the way, as you as you guys can see here, so the DP, sorry, the bottom up is faster than the uh, than the uh, the recursive because for the re the recursive functions cost the system the system the computer also need uh, need some uh, extra time to uh, to save the state for each of the recursive functions. That's why the recursive method always a little bit slower than the uh, the eater than the bottom up ones okay and um, yeah so i think that's pretty much it is for this problem and uh, a very interesting problem yeah i think for me i well to be honest i didn't i didn't solve this problem by my by myself i uh, I, I i struggled a while uh, I'm trying to understand what this problem is is asking us to to solve and how how is how, what's the strategy right what's the the strategy of choosing the the numbers and and how can we assume what's the we should assume the worst case and among those all, all the worst cases we we get the the minimum so this is basically it's kind of like minimum the maximum DP problem but it's um it's an interesting one. Cool guys, I think that's it for this problem. Thank you so much uh, for watching the videos. Stay tuned and see you guys soon. Bye-bye.